going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to In Modern Nation. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to take apart a Synology DS214 Plus network attached storage. You may not own a Synology DS214 Plus, but you'll find the construction of many of these devices to be very similar. The only tool that you'll need for this teardown will be a Phillips screwdriver. We're gonna start with a small screw which holds the back of the Synology disk station together. There are a lot of screws in this teardown of different shapes and sizes, so it's important to remember where these screws go. If we turn over the disk station, we'll discover that there are two more screws holding the back of the disk station together. With these three screws removed, we can now pry off the back. Don't tug too hard as there's still a fan cable attached. You normally don't want to remove a fan connector by the wires, but that's just for your information. We have the fan assembly, now let's remove the fan. By the way, if you need to replace the fan, it's 92 millimeters in size. I learned that replacing the stock fan with a high performance fan yields no performance benefits. You can click on the card in the upper right hand corner to find out why. We can now remove the top enclosure of the disk station. As you can see, the hard drives are still inside of the enclosure. Ideally, you'd want to take out the hard drives before beginning the teardown, but now is as good of a time as any. I like the idea of being able to lock down the hard drives, but I'm always worried that I'm going to lose the key. You can now see the computer inside of the disk station. This is why you pay big money for these devices. Before we remove the electronics, let's remove the plastics. The front face has two screws on the bottom and two clips on the top. I use the screwdriver to carefully pry the plastic clips off. The hard drives slide in on these plastic rails. They've got to go. From this angle, you can actually see the SATA ports where the hard drives connect. Before we remove the plastics, let's remove the support beams. I'm now removing every screw from the top of the disk station. This includes the metal support beams and the plastic rails. You may have noticed that there are no wires inside of the disk station. More on that later. In order to remove the plastic tray, you're going to need to pull away from the disk station. That's because Synology doesn't use wires. They use onboard connectors. We need to flip it over in order to remove the other plastic tray. Plastics be gone. Now all we're left with are the electronics and the metal enclosure. No wires, but you can see that onboard connector holding onto the SATA ports. Next, we're going to remove the four screws that are holding on the SATA ports. Remember when you remove the connector to pull away from the board. You know, I really got to hand it to Synology. I love the way that their products are constructed. We're gonna remove the screws for the two support beams in the back and then remove those. There's one screw holding in the power interface board. Finally, we're gonna remove the screws that hold the main board to the enclosure. There's a hidden screw down here, don't forget about it. And in order to remove the IO, we just need to Well, f Pretty sure that piece of tape was for grounding. Try to be a little bit more careful than I was. These two screws connect the roof of the enclosure. With the roof apart, it's much easier to slide the board out. And that's it. Congratulations on tearing down your Synology disk station. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them for me in the comment section below. Leave a like on this video and I will see ya.